Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. It's Joe here bringing you an episode of Bite Size, small chunks of video to discuss some of the cards on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Unlimited list. In each episode, I'll be reviewing a summary of a selected card from the TCG Limited and Forbidden list, and having a brief discussion of the history of the card, common reasons why it got banned, and the likelihood that it will see play again in the advanced format anytime soon. In this episode of Bite Size, I'd like to talk about the ever ominous Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. Chaos Emperor Dragon is widely regarded as one of the original broken cards, and the fact that it has remained on the TCG ban list since it initially was included back in September 2004 is testament just to how strong this card is. For those not familiar why this card was originally placed onto the list, it's actually a combination of cards that most people would point to that spelled the downfall for this epic boss monster, which has kept it locked up for over 14 years to those of us in the TCG. CG regions. To put some context onto this, the card was printed as part of the Invasion of Chaos booster packs, released in North America from March 2004, meaning this was available to advanced format players for just 6 months before being hit with the mighty ban hammer. Chaos Emperor Dragon's original effect reads, This card can only be special summoned by removing one light and one dark monster in your graveyard from play. Pay 1000 of your life points to send all cards in both players' hands and on the field to the graveyard. Inflict 300 points of damage to your opponent's life points for each card that is sent to the graveyard by this effect. Already this effect is pretty absurd, it doesn't take a genius to spot that this is already problematic of its own accord. The summoning conditions were pretty easy to fulfil, and the effect not only got rid of all your opponent's resources, but also punished them for all the ones you got rid of too. Effectively, your opponent will be burned for 300 times however many cards went to the graveyard, as well as facing down a 3k beat stick and no resources to handle it. On top of that, the effect was not a once per turn, as is common these days with card effects, so the effect could be used if by chance they had any kind of fight back ready and waiting. All of this for a measly 1000 life points. Summoning Chaos Emperor Dragon on its own was more or less a game winner. All of this was made much worse by Chaos Emperor Dragon's partner in crime, Yata Garasu. If there's one thing us Yu-Gi-Oh players love, it's taking something that's already broken and making it much worse. Players realised pretty quickly that this would eventually become known as the Yata Lock. This could be achieved relatively easily, and it was a lock that almost certainly guaranteed victory. The Yata Lock simply required the player to activate Chaos Emperor Dragon while having Sangan or Witch of the Black Forest on the field. Either of these being sent to the graveyard would add Yata Garasu from deck to hand, and then they could summon the monster, and with no cards to defend themselves, the opposing player now faced the prospect of having no resources and no longer being able to draw during the draw phase. The process would continue until the controller of the Atalot was victorious, usually because her opponent just scooped. Whilst there's no doubt that Chaos Emperor Dragon is still too broken to return to the game, there's been an announced errata to the card, which is due to release as a Shonen Jump promo, meaning we might just see Chaos Emperor Dragon gracing the field of battle soon enough, although its effect has been whittled away somewhat compared to its full-powered ancestor from Invasion of Chaos. I'm afraid that's all we have time for on this episode of Bite Size. If you enjoyed this episode, consider hitting the like button and leaving a comment with your thoughts. If you want to stay up to date with my latest content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel too. Maybe for some weird reason you haven't had enough of me and want to hear more. Well, if that's the case, you can find me on Facebook and in Twitter, and the links for both can be found in the description below. Thanks guys, bye.